Hello again, it's Steve Fentress on behalf of the Strassenburg Planetarium with the sky this week for April 16th to 23rd. And let's watch the sunset. Sunset April 15th. April 16th is 7.55 p.m. April 23rd, 8.03 p.m. So we break the 8 o'clock barrier this week. Just as the sun is setting, really bright in the west, the planet Venus. And looking a little to our left toward the southwest, I'm sure soon we will see the brightest star in the night sky. There it is, Sirius. The next thing to become visible as the sky darkens. And then some familiar stars coming in. Three stars in a row. Somebody's belt. It's the constellation Orion. And we are nearing the end of Orion's season. If we snap forward a few days, just in a week's time, see how much lower Orion will be just before 9 o'clock by the time we get to April 23rd. So catch him while you can. Let's turn now to the north and see what our friends up there are up to. The Big Dipper must be around here somewhere, way up high, just after dark in April. And we can add some blue lines for some star shapes and see how the last two stars in the cup of the Big Dipper point to a star that will stay in the same place all night because Earth's axis of rotation points almost exactly at it. Polaris, our North Star. The Big Dipper, part of an ancient constellation, Ursa Major, the Great Bear, and the Little Dipper, part of Ursa Minor, the Little Bear. And down there on the opposite side of the North Star, those stars shaped like a W, but the constellation there starts with a C. It's Cassiopeia, a queen of Ethiopia from ancient Greek mythology. And as we go through the night, all those stars appear to rotate around Polaris. Let's check some favorite websites to see what's going on in the sky. Here is Astronomy Picture of the Day. We always recommend this one. And a few days ago, this beautiful photograph of an event in the sky that happened earlier this month, the crescent moon and the beautiful Pleiades star cluster and Venus all close together in the sky. I think I might check with my Stellarium sky simulation software to see if that's a composite or if those things really did appear like that together. A few days before that on Astronomy Picture of the Day, this is the Bortle scale. It's a way of rating how good your sky is for seeing stars from a bright suburban sky to a beautiful dark sky site. So this is on Astronomy Picture of the Day. Going over to spaceweather.com, there's another comet. This one's called Comet Swan. It was found in data being returned by a solar observing satellite. And you can click to go to a visualization of the orbit by an expert amateur astronomer. And the orbit is, uh, of the comet is the red thing there. Comets get bright and have tails when they are activated by light and heat from the sun. So you want to find the time when the comet is close to the sun and then see if it's visible from Earth at that time. So this is mid to late May. And I'm dragging around to see what the view line from Earth will be. And it's hard to tell. It looks like when we look for the comet, we're going to be looking into the daytime sky. So stay tuned for news about whether this comet swan will become visible to us when we get to May. Heavensabove.com, always good to check. You can look for a star chart made for your location and any date and time you want. And predictions of satellites passing over in your sky, including the constellation of Starlink satellites being put up by Elon Musk. Click on a random one here, and it looks like on this particular date, one of them is going to go right past Venus in our sky about eight minutes after nine o'clock. So this is the kind of thing you can find on Heavens Above. Well, we're back outside. It's about three o'clock in the morning. Look how far the Big Dipper has gone but it still points to Polaris, the North Star. 
And here in the wee hours of the morning, let's look over toward the east and see what's coming up. Vega and Altair, along with Deneb, the Summer Triangle. Most people will be noticing that in the evening when we get to July, but we can see it now because we're getting up early in the morning. Each of the three con uh, stars in the Summer Triangle part of a different ancient constellation. And then toward the southeast, starting about four in the morning, a pretty spectacular show. Bright reddish star Antares in the constellation Scorpius the Scorpion. And then this array of planets coming up in the southeast. Jupiter is really bright, almost as bright as Venus. And Jupiter is a great thing to look at with a telescope, especially if you're just getting started, because it's really easy once you get it focused to see the four large moons of Jupiter, and they are in a different place every time you look because they're constantly moving in their orbits around Jupiter. So get up early, try your telescope about 5.30 in the morning on Jupiter. If we step forward day by day, we're, we'll see how the Moon and Mars are moving away from Saturn and Jupiter in our sky day by day. But Jupiter is going to stay bright right until the sun rises. Sunrise April 16th, 6.25 in the morning. By the time we get to April 23rd, 6.14. That's our sky this week. Thanks for watching.